Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will compare the hypertrophic effects of training with shorter versus longer interset rest periods. First, let's quickly define what exactly interset rest means. As the name implies, interset rest refers to the rest time taken between each set of an exercise. For example, if we were to perform three sets of bicep curls, our interset rest would be the time taken between each set. It should be noted that interset rest is not the same as resting within a set of lifting, like that which would be seen during specific techniques like cluster sets or rest pause. Interset rest is strictly the time from the end of one set to the start of another set. So what is best for hypertrophy, taking longer or shorter interset rest periods? To answer this, let's look at what the research says on this topic. The best evidence we have on this topic is this systematic review. The researchers concluded that both longer and shorter rest periods seem to be similarly hypertrophic, although longer interset rest may be slightly superior. So according to the overall literature on the topic, longer rest periods may be slightly superior than short rest periods for muscle growth. So why is this the case? Well, let's look at some of the indirect effects of interset rest and how it may explain why this may be the case. The first indirect effect that interset rest has is on acute fatigue and therefore lifting performance. Quite obviously, shorter rest periods allow less recovery time and increases acute fatigue, which ultimately results in poorer lifting performance of each subsequent set. Longer rest periods allow more recovery time, allowing more time to dissipate fatigue, which ultimately results in superior lifting performance compared with shorter interset rest. This may be one reason that longer rest periods results in slightly superior muscle growth. This can be seen in this study, which compared different interset rest periods on hypertrophy outcomes. Trainees performed full body resistance training sessions three times per week with either one or three minutes rest between each set. After an eight week training program, we can see here that volume load, meaning sets times reps times load, was greater in the three minute rest group compared with the one minute rest group. This suggests that when trainees rested longer, they were able to perform more reps per set or lift heavier loads on average. As a result, we can see that both groups achieved significant muscle growth, but the long rest group saw superior growth for all muscles measured. This study suggests that longer interset rest periods allow superior lifting performance, which may translate to superior muscle growth over time. So basically, our quality of training is greater when resting longer between sets. Another indirect effect rest periods can have is its effects on the mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy. There are three primary mechanisms of muscle hypertrophy which are proposed to contribute to muscle growth. These are mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. This theoretical graph describing the interplay of these different mechanisms was proposed in the systematic review we mentioned previously. As we can see, it is theorized that shorter rest periods promote greater metabolic stress while longer rest periods promote greater mechanical tension and muscle damage. This may explain why short rest periods, despite inhibiting lifting performance, aren't drastically inferior for muscle growth. They only seem to be slightly inferior. This is because when we limit rest periods, as long as we are training fairly close to failure, we are still maximally stressing the muscle, although it is achieved through slightly different mechanisms. This leads us onto the next topic, which is the use of metabolite versus traditional training for hypertrophy. Metabolite techniques are those which generally involve short rest periods and higher rep ranges, while traditional training is that which involves longer rest periods and standard loading ranges. While it seems that overall traditional training appears to be slightly superior, we may be able to take advantage of metabolite style training for certain exercises. For example, this study explored the effects of tricep training with different rest intervals. One group trained in a traditional manner, performing three sets of a 12RM load with 90 seconds interset rest, while the other group trained with a drop set technique, performing three sets of subsequently decreasing load with minimal interset rest. As we can see, acute muscle thickness post-training was significantly greater after the drop set training, which is an indicator of metabolic stress. This resulted in superior increases in triceps growth after six weeks of training. So it seems that short rest protocols may be equally as effective, if not superior, for some isolation lifts. Why is this the case? 
Well, this may be explained by which systems are the limiting factor during different exercises and training methods. When we implement shorter versus longer interset rest times, not only will this impact the mechanisms of hypertrophy, but it will also influence which systems limit performance of each set. For hypertrophy training, we always want the target muscle to be the limiting factor of each set, not any other systems. This is because we want to maximize stress of the muscle tissue, as this is where we want the adaptations to take place. We don't want the cardiovascular system or any other accessory muscles to limit performance before the target muscle. However, when we perform an exercise, these systems are inevitably fatigued in addition to the target muscle. This is only really a concern for compound lifts, not so much for isolation lifts. This is because when we perform compound lifts, we have more accessory and stabilizer muscles involved and a greater cardiovascular demand. This means we are at a higher risk of one of these systems failing before the target muscle is maximally stressed. So for compound lifts, we probably want to ensure we rest long enough that our accessory muscles, cardiovascular system and respiratory system are sufficiently recovered so that they don't interfere with performance of subsequent sets. This may explain why in full body resistance training protocols using compound lifts, the research finds that longer rest periods are superior. For isolation lifts on the other hand, this is less of a concern. This is because isolation lifts only really stress one muscle group specifically. There is minimal involvement of other accessory and stabilizer muscles. This is because isolation lifts only really stress one muscle group specifically, and there is minimal involvement of other accessory and stabilizer muscles. Because less total musculature is involved, the cardiovascular and respiratory systems are not significantly fatigued. Therefore, no matter how short rest periods are, the target muscle will almost always be the limiting factor, assuming technique is strict and effective. This may also explain why some of the research on isolation lifts shows equivalent or even superior muscle growth with shorter rest periods. So far, we have only really discussed the physiological effects of short versus long interset rest periods. However, we also need to consider the practical implications of manipulating interset rest. There are two primary practical considerations that should be made regarding rest periods. Let's now cover what they are and what implications they have. The first is time availability. Most lifters have a limited amount of time available to train or don't want to spend all day training. Therefore, trainees may need to or want to get their sessions done within a certain time frame. How long we spend resting between sets can significantly increase or decrease our time spent in the gym. Obviously, shorter rest periods will allow us to complete our training session in a shorter time frame, while longer rest periods will extend the length of our training sessions. There is no inherently better or worse option here, it is ultimately a question of practicality and something that will be different for each individual. Related to time available to train is training volume. Because longer rest periods will extend our training time, it may limit how much volume we can train with, while shorter rest periods may allow us to train with more volume in the same time frame. For example, let's say we were to perform three sets of an exercise with two and a half minutes rest between sets. Assuming each set takes around one minute, the total training time would be eight minutes. However, if we were to cut our rest periods to one and a half minutes, we would be able to perform four sets in eight and a half minutes. So we would be able to perform an additional set in around the same time frame. This is ultimately a trade-off between quality versus quantity. Longer rest periods, at least for compound lifts, will allow higher quality training to be performed, generally resulting in superior hypertrophy. However, trainees may be able to perform more volume with shorter rest periods, although the quality of each set will be slightly inferior, at least for compound lifts. Which strategy is more hypertrophic? Well, there is no right or wrong answer here, rather it depends on exercise selection, training experience, individual context, and personal preference. So to summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. I like to think of interset rest prescriptions on a spectrum. On one side, we have longer interset rest periods, and on the other side, we have shorter rest. Generally, longer rest periods are going to be more suitable for compound lifts with high stability demands and high cardiovascular demands. They are also more suitable if trainees don't really have limitations for how long they can spend in the gym, and for those conducting a fairly low volume training program. 
This will allow high quality training for these exercises and will likely promote superior long-term muscle growth. On the other side of the spectrum, shorter rest periods are more suitable for isolation lifts with low stability demands and low cardiovascular demands. They are also more suitable for those who may have time restrictions on how long they can spend in the gym each session, and for those who may have a high amount of volume to complete in each session. This will allow trainees to complete their session in a time efficient manner and may allow more total volume to be performed. As a practical example, we may require longer rest periods for a back squat, slightly shorter for a leg press and even shorter for a leg extension. We may allow around three to five minutes rest between sets of squats, one to three minutes rest for the leg press and around 30 to 90 seconds rest for the leg extensions. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.